Hello guys. Welcome to my channel. Hope you like it and enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. Military coups in Somalia 1969 Somali coup d'état. The 1969 Somali was the bloodless takeover of Somalia's government on October 21, 1969 by far-left military officers of the Supreme Revolutionary Council led by Mohamed Syed Bar. Somali troops supported by tanks under the command of Bar stormed Mogadishu and seized key government buildings and ordered the resignation of the country's leaders. The coup deposed President Sheikh Mukhtar Mohammed Hussein and Prime Minister Mohammed Eagle and led to the 21-year-long military rule by Bar and the imposition of an authoritarian government in Somalia until 1991. Mohammed Syed Bar was born about 1919 or earlier, group in Italian Somaliland. He joined the Somali police force after the British took control of the country in 1941 and rose to the post of chief inspector. When Somalia was returned to Italian sovereignty in 1950, Syed was sent to the military academy in Italy. He transferred to the Somali National Army when it was formed, 1960, and by 1966 he held the rank of Major General and had become Commander-in-Chief. After seizing power on October 22, 1969, Syed made himself head of a Supreme Revolutionary Council and imposed autocratic rule through a personality cult and the harsh enforcement of an official ideology called scientific socialism. He strengthened relations with the Soviet Union, officially outlawed clan loyalties, while using clan elders to establish order in rural areas, and promoted literacy with a newly introduced Roman alphabet. He later renounced his ties with the Soviets and sought U.S. aid, but allegations of human rights abuses hurt his international standing. By 1990 fighting among clans and between clan mil militias and the government forced Syed to promise reforms, including free elections. He was forced out of office in January 1991 and in 1992 went into exile in Nigeria. Arising out of the highly contested parliamentary elections of March 1969 and political tensions, the coup led to political repression and Somalia becoming a virtual Soviet satellite state until 1977 at which point it became an ally of the United States. It was the first successful coup after two previous aborted attempts in Somali history since the country achieved independence nine years earlier in 1960. The coup d'état took place during the early morning hours of October 21, 1969. Troops of the Somali National Armed Forces supported by tanks and commanded by various members of the Supreme Revolutionary Council sealed off several strategic sites in Mogadishu, including the Parliament Building, Information Ministry, Radio Mogadishu, Police Headquarters, and the Mansion of Prime Minister Eagle. Major government officials were abducted and imprisoned. Several former senior Somali politicians were rounded up during the coup as well, among them former President Aden Atta and former Prime Minister Abdurizak Haji Hussein. Both were placed in detention and were not released until 1973. Prime Minister Eagle too was imprisoned but in solit solitary confinement. Despite the seizure of police buildings in the coup, the police did not resist the military and even cooperated with them. Jama Ali Korshel, the head of the Somali police force, was appointed vice chairman of the Supreme Revolutionary Council. After Coop's forces seized Radio Mogadishu, the station began broadcasting martial music as a way of conveying the motives of the coup leaders, including the song Either Doomsday Death or Victory of Life, which invoked images of several wild animals such as lions and horses. In his first speech on the radio during the coup, Mohammed Syed Bar condemned the corruption of the old regime and disparaged the oppression of the educated. He also explained that although the government he had overthrown was inept and corrupt not all of its members were criminals, perhaps acknowledging that he had been a part of the very system he had just overthrown. Bar's Supreme Revolutionary Council dissolved the parliament and the Supreme Court and suspended the constitution. In 1970, one year after the coup, Syed Bar declared Somalia to be a socialist state and set upon the Somalization of the country, essentially a grand scheme to diminish clan loyalties and create a dutiful Somali country. Aftermath Poster of Syed Bar in Mogadishu The 25-member Supreme Revolutionary Council, in essence a military junta, 
took over all the duties of the state after the coup, including the presidency, National Assembly, and Council of Ministers. The country was renamed the Somali Democratic Republic and a political purge took place. Political parties were banned, former Prime Minister Eagle and several other politicians were sentenced to lengthy prison sentences, and dissidents were persecuted. A power struggle in the ranks of the SRC took place with Syed Bar eventually rising to become Somalia's leader. Salad Gaber Kidai, who had been called the father of the revolution, and Abdulkader Deal, a high-ranking army colonel were executed in public by firing squad in 1972. Bar, called the victorious leader began leading the country in the direction of scientific socialism and sought to create a shared national identity in Somalia by decreasing the role and influence of the country's various clans. Nomads were resettled into agricultural communes, a large literacy campaign was undertaken, women were granted more rights, and the Latin script was officially adopted for use in the Somali language. Military spending increased with the help of the Soviet Union which provided large volumes of equipment and trainers, and soon Somalia possessed one of the most powerful military forces in Africa. Bar cultivated a cult of personality throughout his 21 years of rule, seeking inspiration from his idols, Kim Il-sung and Gamal Abdel Nasser. The SRC was dissolved in 1976. Allegations of Soviet involvement Though no official evidence has been presented to support this theory, suspicions of Soviet involvement in the coup have been widespread since the takeover was carried out in 1969. At the time, post-colonial Somalia had been receiving large volumes of military support from the Soviet Union including vehicles, small arms, and technical assistance in the form of advisors. In addition, thousands of Somali military officers had been sent to the Soviet Union for training in the country's military academies and the Soviet Union maintained a sizable naval base in the country. However, after the coup the Soviets remained wary of the new regime and seemed unsure of the junta's preferred political direction. It is known that the KGB station in Mogadishu was notified in advance of the coup and some of the plotters were Sovi Soviet informants. Salad Gaber Kidai, one of the coup's main architects who was executed in 1972, was a KGB informant codenamed Dissolution and Reinstatement. In July 1976, Bar's SRC disbanded itself and established in its place the Somali Revolutionary Socialist Party, SRSP, a one-party government claiming to be based on scientific socialism and Islamic tenets. The SRSP was an attempt to reconcile the official state ideology with the official state religion by adapting Marxist-Leninist precepts to local circumstances. Emphasis was placed on the Muslim principles of social progress, equality and justice, which the government argued formed the core of scientific socialism and its own accent on self-sufficiency, public participation and popular control, as well as direct ownership of the means of production. While the SRSP encouraged private investment on a limited scale, the administration's overall direction was nominally socialist. After the unsuccessful Ogadin campaign of the late 1970s, a new constitution was promulgated in 1979 under which elections for a People's Assembly were held. However, the Politburo of Bar's Somali Revolutionary Socialist Party continued to rule. On October 23, 1980, Bar reinstated the Supreme Revolutionary Council via Presidential Decree No. 3, and five subcommittees were established, including defense and security and political. After Somalia lost the Ogaden War in March 1978, the president's popularity with Somalis plummeted and widespread discontent among his generals led to an attempted coup d'etat on the 10th of April 1978. Most of the coup's ringleaders were rounded up and executed, but some escaped and formed the Somali Salvation Democratic Front, starting the rebellion that eventually toppled Syed Bar from power 13 years later. In May 1986, Mohammed Syed Bar suffered serious injuries in a car crash near Mogadishu, when the car transporting him smashed into the back of a bus during a heavy rainstorm. He was treated in a hospital in Saudi Arabia for head injuries, broken ribs and shock for a month. Lieutenant General Mohammed Ali Samatar, then Vice President, served as de facto head of state for the next several months. Although Barr managed to recover enough to present himself for re-election to a seven-year term on December 23, 1986, his poor health and advanced age led to speculation about who would succeed him. 
Possible contenders included his son-in-law General Ahmed Suleiman Abdil, then the Minister of the Interior, in addition to Samatar. In an effort to hold on to power, Bar's ruling Supreme Revolutionary Council, SRC, became increasingly totalitarian and arbitrary. This caused opposition to his government to grow. Bar tried to quell the unrest by abandoning appeals to nationalism, relying more and more on his own inner circle, and exploiting historical clan animosities. By the mid-1980s, more resistance movements supported by Ethiopia's communist Derg administration had sprung up across the country. Bar responded by ordering punitive measures against those he perceived as supporting the guerrillas, especially in the north. The clampdown included the bombing of cities, with the Northwestern Administrative Center of Hargeisa, a Somali national movement, SNM, stronghold, among the targeted areas in 1988. In December 1981, unrest was triggered in northern Somalia professionals in Hargeisa who created a self-help group to improve local facilities, this was followed by the systematic efforts to remove all from positions of power including the military, judiciary and security services, as well as harsh policies enacted against the including a declaration of economic warfare on the the transfer of power to non-ISAC pro-government individuals further pushed communities to rebel against bars. Regime and was one of the main causes of the breakout of the Somaliland. Thanks for watching please subscribe my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more history.